Hey, what's up, everybody? You are tuned in to the GM Podcast. Uh, we are in Hollywood right now, which is the strangest part of California. <laughs> um, we're approaching some traffic, like always. Uh, if you're not from California, there's traffic all over these freeways. Um, my buddy introduced me to an interesting top topic today. Um, you want to fill him in? Hey, what's up, everybody? It's the one and only... You know my name. All right, so today I, we'd like to discuss about something very important, I would say, I think, in everybody's lives. And it may or may not be important in somebody <clears throat> somebody's life who really doesn't, uh, doesn't really depend on anybody or who, who thinks they're a lone ranger or they just don't give a crap about people. But today's topic is who are friends who are they and do we have friends i remember when my grandma was alive i would tell her you know i she would see me getting ready and then um she would say oh where are you going and i would say oh i'm going to the mall grandma i'm going with some friends and she walk away saying there are no such thing as friends and i would just roll my eyes like okay grandma whatever <clears throat> He's gonna have to excuse me a little bit because I'm a little bit with the cold today. And she would say, There are no friends, walk away and kind of leave me there, kind of with like a big old question mark on my forehead. And I would just kind of like dismiss her, like, Okay, my grandma's crazy sometimes. But now, as a almost 40 year old, I'm 39 by the way, but as an almost 40 year old woman going through a lot of shit, went through a lot of shit, now I realize what my grandma really meant. There really are no friends. At the end of the day, when you've gone through your, 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 your stuff, you realize that you really don't have anybody there, honestly. And it's sad, it's really heartbreaking because we all, I think as, as human beings, we all are, uh, yearn for somebody. We all want somebody in our lives, somebody to, to help us, to support us. <clears throat> to love us it doesn't matter if it's a friend or a mother a daughter a father or a son it doesn't matter we want somebody at least one person we can count on and I think in my my whole life's history of existence I have always wished for somebody to be there for me and not in the baby type of form because I'm a I'm a pretty resilient person and I could fend for myself but somebody always wants somebody who they can absolutely rely on as far as like that person has my back. That person will never talk shit about me. That person will be there for me if I need them on a good day or if I need them on a bad day. That's what I'm talking about. And to be honest, if you all dissect the people that you have in your lives, you realize that if you dissect them and 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 try to match all the traits that I just mentioned, you'll realize that not one single person has all traits. You're lucky if you do. And I feel that I have all those traits in you, partner. Oh, shit. Well, thank you. That means a lot. Um, but there's a famous quote out there that says, uh, keep your uh, friends your enemies keep, close yeah keep your enemies close and your no friends, no, no. Close, friends and your close enemies closer and your enemies closer <coughs> and i'm going to reflect on that because it, it it does hit home to me it it um it actually it impacts a lot of people's lives especially when they've been backstabbed when they have uh you know just uh not so good memories with these other people you know or uh, just in general just just bad behavior within themselves <clears throat> it's it's really messed up you know you, you have these f so-called friends or these these people that um that are not out for to to help you out man it's it can it can really you know affect you in a lot of ways um <laughs> i remember this uh this girl that i was dating in high school uh she uh she basically broke up with me and then 
this dude that I was, you know, uh, up, yeah, supposedly it was my friend. Yeah, they started going out after we, me and her had broken up. And uh, that really hurt, man. It, it, it doesn't necessarily break you down, but it like internally, like your stomach feels weird. You feel like you're throwing it's up. Yeah, it, and it's it's like, all right, man. Like, if if you really were my friend, like, I wonder what else other type of shady shit you did behind my back while you were supposedly there for me. Um, I think a lot of people can relate to this, but um, I'm glad that you feel that way towards me because I feel like I've found a true friend with you. You know, I feel like we can. Uh, we can tackle a lot of things together, and not only that, we we actually think alike, which which in a lot of aspects of life, you have to have the same type of thinking as you. And what happens is that you guys you guys are communicating on a different level without actually communicating. That to me is a good friend, or the uh, subject is uh, who out there are really friend are are your real friends that to me is what defines this subject or this topic is that you know i don't have to keep watching my back i don't have to uh you know i, I could tell you hey you know i really need this done and, and i know that you're gonna jump on it and those are the values that people carry when they actually say oh yeah she's my friend or he's my friend that's that's the type of attitude you should be carrying throughout your life Absolutely. And, you know, I remember when uh, during the period that I was married, uh, my ex-husband and I had a lot of mutual friends. And something happened as soon as, you know, as soon as we divorced, as soon as the divorce was final or during the separation, <clears throat> I felt like a lot of people were like scared of me. Like I had this this cooties now because now I'm this single woman and a lot of my married couple friends didn't want to invite me to their things anymore. And I felt really like, like disgusted with that because they didn't have to say it. Sometimes people don't understand that actions speak so much louder than words. Their actions speak loud. And I really was offended when I would hear, oh, so-and-so just had a, a, a party. And when, when, when I was married, I was invited. But now that I was divorced, I was no longer invited. And things started changing for me. I started seeing people different. Um, other little things happened. You mean your friends? Yeah, my friends, my so-called friends. Uh, <clears throat> I started seeing people differently. On it. Like, right now, if you were to tell me, right now, if you were to tell me, Gabby, how do you feel about people? I would tell you that people live two lives. People live this front in front of other people. They, they pretend to be a certain way. And then they have this other side of them that don't allow to be like really shown. I have one life. And the people who know me can tell you, fuck, Gabby acts the same remember I told you that one time I was like accused of like are you drunk and I'm like what the hell this is me I'm sober and I'm just a happy ass clown like I could act like a, like a clown and joke around and be funny all the damn time because that's just me and people have accused me of being drunk or buzzed so what does that tell you that tells you that I have the same face all the time and you know one thing that really um, rubs me the wrong way about people is is the fakeness is that they say one thing and then they really just mean the opposite of what they just said <clears throat> there's a lot of that going on yeah there's a lot of that going on and to be quite frank I I live my life like my life is a code I live my life as what I say I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it. There's certain things that, you know, minor things, if I can't come through, like, I'll be like, fuck, I, I can't, I can't do that. Or, you know what, I'm sorry, it didn't come out the way I thought. But when it has something to do with meaning, like if I tell you, you're my best friend, you better fucking believe I'm gonna be there for you, regardless. <clears throat> on a good day, on a bad day, I'm gonna be there for you. And I show it with action all the time. 
my words and my actions will always match always there's there's not people cannot sit there and be like gabby's a fucking hypocrite because she said she doesn't like so and so and look at her all up all up over there being their friend that's not that's not me uh, my my actions will always match my words and i don't understand why people can't be that way is it really that hard to to just do what you mean and mean what you do and so when you and i met partner kind of going back on what you said you and i really have a mutual understanding of what true friendship really means because i think before i met you in your world you kind of wanted a friend a friend who could be true like you're true to people you're honest you're you've always been honest with me and so in my world before you I had the same fucking mentality like I wanted to be somebody's friend and I wanted to care for somebody and, and when I was married I thought my ex-husband was my best friend you know and, and I was always true to him but it was never really reciprocated and so we walked around in our lives kind of empty like fuck are we really the only ones on this planet who can commit to our word you know what I mean yeah. and so when you and I met and then we kind of started speaking and then the action started matching right. i was like holy shit maybe i really found myself a friend but i still wasn't quite sure you know because it's really difficult to trust people yeah. <clears throat> and it's sad to even say that that it's it's sad to admit when you have trust issues and i've and i've been open about this before i have trust issues but i think if you were to really understand my life you would know you will know why I have trust issues, but it hasn't been hard to trust you. Gotcha. Well, if I may fill in, it's the consistency. Yeah. When you find somebody that's consistent to what their words mean into their actions on a daily basis, you find the true consistency of what people go through on a daily basis. And it doesn't change. You know, that's what consistency is all about. Uh, you're giving the same product to the same customers, to the same loyal people. You're not changing the formula. Once you start changing the formula, you're, you're going to lose in translation. And without consistency, having that backbone, that true friend, you know, at, at the end of the day, you're going to be like, hey, whatever happened to that consistency that you had? Yeah. Um, you know, what are we doing here? Why are we neck to neck or like head butt head uh wasting each other's time wasting each other's time or headbutting each other you know the uh the lack of consistency that people have nowadays is high yep. and it shows for it it shows in the relationship with their with their better half with even their best friends air quotes um it just it just goes to shit with without the consistency guys it's it's really one of those things that it's up in the air it's never really grasped. It's never. Uh, it's never really held on tight. Nor is it used in a proper manner. You know, I think I told you this. I think I told you this. You and I were talking about even about. I think um, like relationships and and what what does love mean? I remember we had a conversation like this, and I told you. For me, the definition of love, like real love, I'm talking about a love that cannot be replaced is like the type of love that a mom can give its child or a father. I, we always rule out fathers, but it, you know what I'm trying to say? Like a mother, because I think the mother has this internal physical connection with their children because our children came out of us. So we have this different type of love for our children where we are willing to die for our kids. That to me is real, real love. So when people say, you know, you meet somebody and, and, two, three months into a relationship or <clears throat> a friendship, it's like, oh, I love you. Like, do you really love me? Or you're just kind of infatuated right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because the, the, the L word, and I told you this before, partner, it is hard for me to say the word love when I don't mean it. If I don't mean the word love, it's, it's almost like, 
crying it out of my mouth. I can't fake the word love. There's a lot of people who sadly use that 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 word loosely. And that's sad because it starts diluting the word love. And, and it doesn't mean anything. Like there's guys out there who can swoop in on a girl and start using the word love or vice versa. A girl trying to get something out of a guy, they use the word love. Or even friends. There's backstabbing friends who use the word love. <coughs> and I think honestly, I think for me, and that's what keeps me real, and that's what's always going to keep me different, is that the words that I that come out of my mouth, dude, I mean with all my heart. And that's why when I talk about certain topics, when I talk about death, when I talk about divorce, when I talk about friendship, is because these are things close to my heart, and you're going to know that they mean something to me. And so I don't just talk shit out of my ass and just, it doesn't mean anything. Like the things that I say mean stuff. And I think... The word love, because you could love a friend. Love shouldn't just be for a boyfriend and girlfriend or, or a husband and wife or or even to your own family. You can love. You could genuinely love your friend. Right. But I think certain people choose when to be a friend, especially when you're down in the dumps. It's cool to hang out with somebody when they're at their highest fucking level. It's cool. They got their shit together. They got some money. <clears throat> they probably got a, a cool pad. You know, they got a cool car. But, but, but what happens when he loses everything? Yeah. Or what happens when she loses everything? Or what happens when he goes through depression? Or she goes through depression? Everybody fucking scatters like roaches. And, and that is one of the saddest fucking things that can happen to somebody. Well, you think... Oh, I, I have so-and-so in my corner. Oh, I have... Try to be with somebody through the fucking hardest time in their life. Try to be there for somebody when they're suffering. Try to be there for somebody when they're hurting. That's a fucking friend. Not only a friend, but that person should be considered family. You know, I want to see somebody go through that. And I want somebody to be like... And I know there's people out there. You and I are not the only ones. But but this but are we scarce? Yeah, we are. Yeah. There's very few people that you can call a real friend, <clears throat> or you can call um, a family. And I have I have some people in my life who surprise me. They surprise me after our divorce. After I divorce or we divorced, <coughs> um, it's gonna come to a lot of shock to people that my ex brother in law my ex-husband's little brother is like my family now he's more closer to me now than he was before he was calling me to check up on me how are you doing um and then of course his his girlfriend as well but i'm just i'm just saying because it's it's a it's a ex-brother-in-law you know what i mean and <laughs> i think i told him this i said can i tell you that i'm really surprised that you're calling me and he's like why you never did anything to me. You're like my sister. And I was like taken back by that. And ever since then, we've been tighter than ever. And those are fucking special people <coughs> in your life. Um, I have a lot of, I have other mutual friends, like some of my, you know, like my compadres, my comadres who still talk to me and, and, and you know, they're in my life. But people that I never thought have surprised me. And, and that's awesome. But I think people need to realize, like, they they need to comb through the through, through the people they hang out with. I think they need to comb through their life and realize, okay, you know what? It's it's time to um, let certain people go because you know in your heart, you, we people are not stupid. We know in their heart, in our hearts, that certain family members or certain people are going to cause us heartaches. But why do we keep them around? Who knows? Well, there's always that those few that come through, you know, and just like your Instagram followers, I think you can start uh, deleting people or, you know, like you say, start combing or start weeding these people out. At the end of the day, they weed themselves out by not yeah. being your, your your true friend. You know what I mean? So when you hear it's not to be an asshole or, or a dick towards somebody, but like at the end of the day, like, is this person really causing you? to level up or is this person causing you to stay afloat or is this person causing you to stay down um you know i think we all know people like this 
So <clears throat> it's time for you to start leveling your game up and, you know, start picking who these the right people is in your life. There's always going to be the, the, the doubtful friend that you think that is uh, that's that's out to get you or you're trying to conspire against. But, you know, it's uh, I think we could all not deal with these people at the end of the day. You know, we 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 have our own heartaches to deal with. And we don't need to continue this lost process of having these people that are not that are not down for you. So I can say that I'm I'm truly down for you, partner. Like yeah, I know. this is this is one of those touchy subjects where you and I can really correlate because I think since I met you, I just you know, and we I, we talked about this earlier, but the honesty within ourselves it was, uh, you know. The more honest you are with these people, it goes two ways. Either they don't want to hear it or they do want to hear it. The people that don't want to hear it, hear it, and they're just like, they run away as fast as they can. But the people that hear it and they appreciate what honesty means to them and they finally hold on to something that really matters, what's going to happen is that it's like a chain effect. It just, it just you know, there's, a, there's more of a... Uh, interlocking type of mechanism within that friendship um i've been honest with you since i met you i don't i mean maybe i lied about eating your ice cream or something <laughs> <laughs> but uh now nah, i think uh i think that's the consistency and the honesty that i bring to the table is what really matters and if i can be honest to a lot of people in my life especially um people that are you know that, that have dealt with me personally and i hope you know if they take it the wrong way then that's on them but my honesty is what really keeps my mind focused on true friendships and relationships i don't want to fake anybody out you know that's a good that's actually i'm glad that you brought that up because um the reason why we're still friends is because you've been honest with me and i remember in the beginning when we first met uh, you know, I would I would come to you with with some of the issues that I had, you know, some of the problems that were that were hurting me at the at the time. And there were some situations where you were being so fucking honest with me that it, it kind of hurt. But you were rude about it. I, that's what I want people to understand. The truth hurts. The truth does hurt. And not anybody and everybody can accept it. But you were being honest with me. And I was like, and I think I even told you, I was like, what the hell and i got a little offended and then what i tell you i was like but shit you're right <laughs> like i can't lie to you you're right like the things that you're telling me and then this is a good sign of a friend people like i'm i'll say it again i'm not a therapist or i'm not an expert but i tell you i'll tell you this i have a good friend by my side a real good one and a, a real friend is gonna tell you when you're fucking up just like your mom like a mom who loves you and a dad who loves you they're never gonna tell their son or daughter oh yeah keep fucking up because you're doing good they're not gonna say that to you because they again back to the real love a mom and a dad they really love you so they're not gonna cheer you on when you're fucking up am i correct right. so for me a friend a real friend is gonna act like a mom and dad to a point they're not going to be the boss of you, but they're going to say, hey, you know what, friend, you're fucking up, please. Like your, your life matters to me. Or you know what, friend, you're going to get hurt, please. Like or you know what, friend, I'm fucking proud of you. Yeah. You could do better. Those to me, those are words of a real friend, not this bullshit like, oh, yeah, yeah keep doing what you're doing uh, um the yes the yes man or the yes woman everything you do is like yeah keep doing it no man you're fucking up don't be an idiot like i would never call you that but you know what i'm saying like don't be dumb like like look i love you and i care about you i'm your best friend please listen to me because your friend a real friend is always going to want you to accelerate and elevate higher i would never want to see you in the dumps and i would never want to see you down and if you ever need me for any reason you know i'd be there for you and i will never leave your side 
And that for me is a, is a, is a real friend, you know, someone who is not just going to be with you in the highs. It's easy to be with people when they're at their highest, be with them at their lowest. And that says a lot about your character. And to be honest with you, when I was going through my lowest, when I was going through my divorce and I was so heartbroken and I was, I felt so alone. I was alone until I met you. I felt alone. My family tried to help me, but you know, it's different with family. Like you don't really want to tell all your problems to your mom and you don't want to tell your problems to your dad. You don't want to worry them like that. You wish you had a friend to, to spill all your guts and to just cry it out. And I felt so fucking lonely, dude. I'm not going to lie to you. My phone rarely fucking rang. I'm not going to lie to you. I had one or two, three people who would check up on me and I really appreciated them. I really did. I don't want them to, to hear this and be like, oh, okay, I see how it is. It's not like that. But for the majority of people who were in my life at the time when I was married, fucking disappeared. That's what I'm talking about. So like if you reached out to me during my hardest moments, I want to tell you that I, it means a lot to me. And I thank you. And I hope that you never stop being like that towards people who need you. Because it's easy to be with somebody at their highest. But it's at the lowest points that they need you the most. So if, if, if you reached out to me at my lowest, I want to thank you with the, from the bottom of my heart. But this message is for those who disappeared, who just vanished. Because it's great to be with somebody at their highest. So, partner, I want to thank you for being my best friend and who, who you put up with me. And I mean that because you really did put up with me. You know, I was feeling a certain way. And I know it's difficult for a man to be a friend of a female because you know it's no secret females are a lot more emotional and i try not to be a little fucking cry baby and i don't think i really was but there were certain times where i really felt lonely and i and i expressed that to you and you were there in your own way and i understood in my head like okay he's a guy he's not gonna sit here and cry together we're gonna eat popcorn <laughs> <laughs> like I know you're different in, in that way and I wasn't expecting you to be like that but you know what I'm saying like I'm very grateful for you to be in my life and I don't want you to I want you to know that I always want you in my life you know so I want to let everybody know that real best friends do exist but I think I said this in the podcast with the uh, the divorce you can't demand anybody to be great if you're not trying yourself to be great and if you're not trying yourself to fix yourself, to be a better person. You can't demand a best friend if you're not a good one. So, you know, you want a best friend, be a good best friend. I think I am. I've always been a great person, dude. Here I go tooting my horn, horn again, but I've always been a great person. I'm, I'm honest. I, I don't lie to my friends. I've always tried to be very, you know, there for them in my own way. I might not be the person who always, like, is on the phone and shit, but, like, I'm always there for people. So, <clears throat> I've always wanted that. And I thank the universe, or I thank God, that I finally did. Good. I'm glad that I can do that for you, man. It's, it's, um... Uh it's in my power to in, empower you, if that makes any sense. Um, I know my emotions are a little bit harder than yours. And um, what I like to do is, and it goes, this goes for my kids too, is give them that tough love where they need to, to feel a certain type of pain so that they can get over their shit and move on with their lives and, and just continue being uh, this great person again. Because life is not fucking fair we all know that life is not fair so either you're gonna sit down knuckle up and just crawl in a little ball and, and, and cry and shit but um at the end of the day we all need that type of support where it's it's certified you know by a best friend stamp it like a usda uh, select beef yeah but um yeah just you know the like i said guys the consistency the the honesty is what really drives a good friendship to the next level and uh just like you said you know your parents are the first ones to tell you that you're screwing up yep. 
And if, if you don't have that support, guess what, man? You're just you're going to keep falling. You're going to keep falling. Finally, you know, the uh, the rope is going to run its time out and um, you're just you're not going to have that type of support where, you know, where you can put your foot up on the ladder. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say about this friendship, man. It's crazy. I think we can all we can all do without some of them. You know, not not everybody's your friend and not everybody's out there to help you. So just keep your heads up, guys. Keep uh, keep your focus on on right. And I think you'll you'll find out how much these people in your lives really mean. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think if it all comes to a surprise to anybody, I recently I mean, I think it's funny, but not funny in a sense where I'm making fun of anybody. But I recently cleaned out my social media and I bumped a lot. I kicked off a lot of people off my IG uh, because the way I see it is they're there. And what are they really doing? They're just looking at my just being nosy because they don't throw me any support. They don't throw me any shout outs. They don't like any of my pictures. They don't really comment. And the comment is to uh, fight with me about certain uh either political religious uh views of that i have so it's like why are you there why are you all up in my business if you really just don't if i get on your nerves that's fine it's fair hey there's a free country you can hate and love whoever you want but i don't want you in my life like that like i could see you in the street and still be cool with you because i'm all i'm a respectful person and unless somebody uh, uh threatens my life then we're cool like, hey, how are you? And that's it. You know, I don't need fake people in my life and that and, and in any aspect of it. So if you're no longer on my IG, then you know what happened. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's really all I have to say. I really wish I wish everybody out there um, a lot of love, and a lot of peace. I wish everybody out there to find their best friend in the in this in this universe i found mine and i could say that very proudly um i I'm, I'm living a great life right now you know i have i'm very happy with with everything going on and i just hope you know i'm just hey man i'm just riding this tidal wave while it while it lasts you know and i know all good things come to an end but they don't really have to you got to just keep that positive mind you got to keep that positive mentality and life life will run its course don't be anxious about it don't be uh don't be uh, living in anxiety just just let life go do the best you can be the best person and even when shit gets bad always know that shit will get better so keep a positive mentality out there guys and uh, i wish everybody the best peace and love You've heard it from the best. The GM Transport is on the move. Uh, we're finally uh, getting rid of this traffic. Hopefully we don't find any more, but you know, LA is, uh, that's what it's all about. But it's all right, because we got a bunch of topics for you guys, all right? <laughs> so keep on listening. We appreciate your support.